Listen to the wonderful Mahayana doctrine, declared in this Lankavatara Sutra, composed into verse gems, and destroying a net of the philosophical views. At that time Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva said this to the Blessed One. 10. These individual objects are not solid realities. They rise because of imagination. As the imagination itself is empty, what is imagined is empty. 11. 12. 13. By wrong discrimination the Vijnana system rises. Severally as eightfold, as ninefold, one like waves on the great ocean. 14. The root is constantly nourished by habit energy, firmly attached to the seat. The mind moves along with an objective world as iron is drawn by the lodestone. 15. The original source on which all sentient beings are dependent is beyond theorization. All doings cease and emancipation obtains, knowing and known are transcended. 16. In the samadhi known as maya-like, one goes beyond the ten stages of bodhisattvaship. One who is removed from thought and knowledge perceives the mind king. 17. When a turning back takes place in the mind, one abides permanently in the palace of lotus form, which is born of the realm of Maya. 18. Abiding in it one attains a life of imagelessness, and, like a many-colored jewel, performs religious deeds for all beings. 19. Except for discrimination, there is neither Samskrita nor Asamskrita. The ignorant hold on to them as a barren woman does to the child of her dream. What fools they are! 20. Let it be known that without self-nature, unborn, and empty are a personal soul, the skanda continuity, causation, the dehartis, and the notion of existence and non-existence. 21. To me teaching is an expedient, but I do not teach external signs. The ignorant because of their attachment to existence seize on signified and signifying. 22. A knower of all things is not an all-knower, and all is not within all. The ignorant discriminate and think, I am the enlightened one in the world. But I am not enlightened nor do I enlighten others. 24. Opening parenthesis. Chapter E. Verse 143 and the first half of 144. Closing parenthesis. 25. 1. 26. 27. These things are empty, without self-nature, and unborn, like Maya, like a dream, and their being and non-being is unobtainable. 28. One self-nature I teach, which is removed from speculation and thought construction, which belongs to the exquisite spiritual realm of the wise, removed from the two Svabhavas I. E. The Parikalpita and the Paratantra. 29. Though multitudinousness of things has no real existence as such, they appear to the intoxicated as like fireflies because of the constitutional disturbance. Likewise is the world essentially appearance. 30. As Maya is manifested depending on grass, wood, and brick, though Maya itself is non-existent, so are all things essentially mere appearances. 31. There is neither seizing nor seized, neither bound nor binding. All is like Maya, like a mirage, like a dream, like an affected eye. 32. When the truth seeker sees the truth devoid of discrimination and free from impurities, then he is accomplished in his contemplation. He sees me, there is no doubt. 33. In this there is nothing of thought construction. It is like a mirage in the air. Those who thus see all things, see nothing whatever point to. 34. In causation which governs being and non-being things do not originate. In the triple world the mind is perturbed, therefore multiplicities appear. 35. The world is the same as a dream, and so are the multiplicities of things in it. The wise see property, touch, death, a world teacher, and work as of the same nature. Point 1. 
36. This mind is the source of the triple world. When the mind goes astray there appears this world and that. Recognizing the world as such, as it is non-existent, a wise man does not discriminate a world. 37. The ignorant because of their stupidity see an objective world as taking its rise and disappearing, but he who has transcendental knowledge sees it neither rising nor disappearing. 38. Those who are always above discrimination, in conformity with truth, and removed from mind and its belongings, are in the celestial palace of Akanishtha where all evils are discarded. 39. Such attain the powers, psychic faculties, and self-control, are thoroughly adept in the samadhis, and are there in the heaven awakened to enlightenment. But the transformed ones are awakened here on earth. 40. The Buddhas appear on earth in their innumerable transformation bodies beyond calculation, and everywhere the ignorant following them listen to the Dharma. 41. There is one thing which is released from such conditions of existence as beginning, middle, and ending, removed from existence and non-existence, all-pervading, immovable, pure, and above multiplicity, and yet producing multiplicity. 42. There is an essence too entirely covered by thought constructions and hidden inside all that has body. Because of perversion there is Maya. Maya, however, is not the cause of perversion. 43. Even because of the mind being deluded, there is a somewhat perceived as real. Being bound up with the two Svabhavas there is the transformation of the Alaya Vijnana. 44. The world is no more than thought construction, and there rages an ocean of views as regards ego and things. When the world is clearly perceived as such and there takes place a revulsion one in the mind, this one is my child who is devoted to the truth of perfect knowledge. 45. Things are discriminated by the ignorant as heat, fluidity, motility, and solidity. They are, however, unrealities asserted. There is neither signified nor signifying. 46. But this body, form and senses are made of the eight substances. Deluded in the cage of transmigration, the ignorant thus discriminate this phenomenal world. 47. In the intermingling of causes and conditions, the ignorant imagine the birth of all things. But as they do not understand the truth, they go astray in this abode of the triple world. 48. 49. What is known as multiplicity seeds multiply in the mind. In what is revealed, the ignorant imagine birth and are delighted with dualism. 50. Ignorance, desire, and karma. They are the causes of mind and its belongings. Two as they evolve thus relatively, they are recognized by me to be paratantric. 51. When the field of mentation gets confused, they imagine that there is something real to take hold of. In this imagination there is no perfect knowledge, it is false imagination rising from delusion. 52. When bound in conditions there evolves a mind in all beings. When released from conditions, I say, I see no mind rising. 53. When the mind, released from conditions and unsupported by thought of self, abides no longer in the body, to me there is no objective world. 54 and 55. 56. 57. So the flood of the Alaya Vijnana is always stirred by the winds of objectivity, and goes on dancing with the various Vijnana waves. 58. Because there is that which is seized and that which seizes, mind rises in all beings. There are no such signs visible in the world as are imagined by the ignorant. 59. There is the highest Alaya Vijnana, and again there is the Alaya as thought construction. I teach suchness that is above seized and seizing. 60. Neither an ego, nor a being, nor a person exists in the skandhas. There is birth when the Vijnana is born, and cessation when the Vijnana ceases. 61. 
as a picture shows highness and lowness while in reality there is nothing of the sort in it. So in things existent there is thingness seen as real, while there is nothing of the sort in them. 62. The visible world has always the appearance of the city of the Gandharvas and that of Fata Morgana. It is to be regarded as such, but it does not thus exist to the transcendental wisdom of the wise. 63 and 64. 65. A proposition is established by means of conditions, reasons, and examples, such as a dream, the Gandharva's castle, firewheel, mirage, the moon, the sun. 66. By such examples as flame, hair, etc. I teach that birth is something not to be recognized really as such. 1. The world is something imagined, empty like a dream, or maya, which is error. 67. The triple world has nowhere to place itself, either within or without, it is thus homeless. Seeing that all beings are unborn, there grows a full acceptance of the truth that nothing is ever born. 68. He will then attain the samadhi called maya-like, the will-body, the psychic faculties, the self-mastery, the various powers belonging to the mind. 69. All things existent are unborn, empty, and without self-substance. And the delusion about them rises and ceases in accordance with conditions. 70. Depending upon the mind, there appears within a mind and, without a world of individual objects. This and no other is an external world which is imagined by the ignorant. 71. This heap of bones, the Buddha image, the analysis of the elements. These are subjects of meditation. By means of mental images good students handle the various aspects of the world. 72. Body, abode, and property are three representations seized upon as objects. The will, the desire to hold, the discrimination of these representations are the seizing agents. 73. As long as those philosophers who get confused in their reasonings and who are unable to go beyond the realm of words, distinguish the discriminating from the discriminated. So long they do not see the truth of suchness. 74. When the yogin by means of his transcendental wisdom understands that all things existent have no self-substance, he thus attains calmness and establishes himself in the state of no form. 75. As an object painted black is taken by the unwise to be a cock, so by the ignorant who do not know, the triple vehicle is understood in like manner. 76. There are no sravakas, no pratyeka buddhas here. If, however, one recognizes the form of a Buddha, of a Sravaka, this is a transformed manifestation of the Bodhisattva whose nature is compassion itself. 77. The triple world of existence is no more than thought construction, which is discriminated by the twofold Svabhava of imagination and relative knowledge. But when within the mind a turning away from the course of sense objects and the ego soul takes place, then we have the truth of suchness. 78. The sun, the moon, the lamp light, the elements, and the gems. Each functions in its own way without discrimination. And so does the Buddha's nature work on its own accord. 79. 80. Things known as defiled or as pure are like hairnets that is, wrongly perceived by the dim-eyed. They really have nothing to do with such notions as birth, abiding, and disappearance, or as eternity and non-eternity. 81. It is like a drugged man whoever he is, who sees the world in golden colors. Though there is no gold, for him the earth has changed into gold. 82. The ignorant, thus defiled since beginningless time with the mind and what belongs to it, apprehend existing things to be really such as they appear to be. Though in fact they owe their origin to Maya or a mirage. 83. One seed and no seed are of the same stamp, and one seed and all seed also. And in one mind you see multiplicity. 84. 
When one seed is made pure, there is a turning into a state of no seed. The sameness comes from non-discrimination. From superabundance there is birth and general confusion from which there grows a multitude of seeds, hence the designation all seed.1. 85. 86. 87. When the self-nature of existence is understood, there is no need of keeping off the delusion. No birth is the self-nature of existence, seeing thus one is released. 88. 89. 90. 91. 92. 93. When the mind is evolved, forms begin to manifest themselves. Really if no minds, no forms. The mind is due to the accumulation of delusions since beginningless past. Then the yogin by his transcendental wisdom sees the world shorn of its appearances. Point two. 94. 95. The Gandhava's air castle, Maya, a hair circle, and the Fata Morgana. They are non-entities yet they appear as if they were entities. The nature of an objective existence is thus to be regarded. 96. Nothing has ever been brought into existence, all that is seen before us is delusion. It is due to delusion that things are imagined to have come into existence, the ignorant are delighted with the dualism of discrimination. 97. As memory or habit energy, vasana grows in various forms the mind is evolved like the waves. When memory is cut off, there is no evolving of mind. 98. The mind is evolved dependent upon a variety of conditions, just as a painting depends upon the wall on which it is painted. If otherwise why is not the painting produced in the air? 1. 99. If mind evolves at all depending on individual forms as conditions, then mind is condition-born, and the doctrine of mind only will not be held true. 100. Mind is grasped by mind, it is not a something produced by a cause. Mind is by nature pure, memory has no existence in mind which is like the sky. 101. An individual mind is evolved by clinging to mind in itself. There is no visible world outside mind itself. Therefore, it is declared that mind only exists. 102. Mind is the alaya vijnana, manas is that which has reflection as its characteristic nature, it apprehends the various sense fields, for which reason it is called a vijnana. 103. Chitta is always neutral. Manas functions in two ways. The functioning vijnana is either good or bad. 110. In self-realization itself there are no time limits. It goes beyond all the realms belonging to the various stages. Transcending the measure of thought, it establishes itself as the result of discipline in the realm of no appearance. 111. That non-existence and existence is recognized, and multiplicity too, is due to erroneous attachment of the ignorant. The error is to see multiplicity.